There are many roller coaster manufacturers and companies out there, but one of the biggest and most notable is Bolger and Mabillard, a company that has been in operation since 1988. In their 35 years of existence, they have given us a lot of different roller coasters, some really good ones and a few bad ones, but overall they're seen as a very reliable, solid company. B&M has a very interesting history, and at the moment, some of their newer investments are a little bit puzzling to me. So that's why it raised the question in my mind if this company is changing for better or for worse. In order to answer the question, is B&M coming out of their shell, we first have to give some historical context. B&M's innovations started with the inverted coaster. The B&M invert was the first coaster model to be an extreme coaster hanging under the track. This is a big innovation and it's so marketable for parks as well. That's one reason why the B&M invert has caught on. They've sold 32 of these models to date and other companies have tried to emulate them, though outside of maybe some of the new age Vacomas, no one has really done it as well. These older B&M inverts are intense, rides like the Batman the Ride clones, Top Gun now Flight Deck at California's Great America, or how about Raptor at Cedar Point? All of those coasters are fast paced, full of inversions, and overall intense attractions. And that became a common theme. B&M also had some sit down roller coasters, and while they weren't too common, those were also seen as very intense. Rides like Kumba and the Incredible Hulk coaster come to mind. All that being said, in recent years there has been some criticism of B&M that some of their coasters have been pretty vanilla and the intensity has fallen away from their layouts. Perhaps in one respect, this is because of the B&M hyper coaster. A lot of these layouts are very similar, some of them lack a little bit of creativity, featuring a bunch of hills, and while the airtime is good, there is some lack of creativity there. And while people do see these as top tier attractions, sometimes it felt like a little bit of copy and paste was going on. Over the last couple of years though, there have been some very interesting additions from the B&M company. So let's look back at their coaster additions starting in 2021. In 2021, Monster at Groenland opened up to the public. This is an inverted coaster and it was their first invert in a minute. And it's a really interesting layout because of where they fit it the in. The layout and the engineering is really impressive. But on the other hand, it's not anything too new, just a cool attraction. They also debuted Decepticoaster in Beijing, but that was just a clone of the Incredible Hulk coaster from our familiar Universal Studios Florida here in America. In 2022, B&M had one ambitious coaster and a few that were pretty typical. The typical ones were Emperor at SeaWorld San Diego, a coaster that was originally supposed to open in 2020, but you know how that goes, and Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Both of these are small-scale dive machines. In the case of Dr. Diabolical, this coaster wasn't anything too groundbreaking for the company that built it, but for the company that bought it, Six Flags, this sent a message. It sent a message that perhaps Six Flags was willing to do something new under Selim Basul. Selim Basul in the Six Flags chain is a conversation for a completely different video, but Dr. Diabolical has been a solid addition for Fiesta Texas. But there was one more coaster from B&M in 2022, and I think this one has kind of flown under the radar. It's Da Vinci Ride in China. This wind coaster is massive. It stands 180 feet tall, has 3,474 feet of track, three inversions, and it's an overall huge coaster. I can't believe I didn't know about it until doing research for this video. This was a truly impressive coaster, and of the wind coasters B&M has made, I think you can make an argument that this is the most impressive. It's certainly up there anyway. And what were some coasters that opened this year? Well, this year's lineup is really interesting. This is where it starts to get good. Pipeline the Surf Coaster is up first. This is a stand-up launch coaster at SeaWorld Orlando. This is very different from their old stand-up roller coasters and any stand-up roller coasters you're going to find, really. It's focused more on bank turns and airtime moments rather than inversions. It only has one. When this announcement was made, it instantly sparked discussion if b and was starting to really get back into the innovation market. Well, more on that in a minute. Pipeline is pretty much a completely new idea and it looks like a great experience. As for the family wing coasters, that's a different discussion. More publicity has gone to Mandrel Mayhem at Chessington Worlds of Adventures. And while the ride looks really cool, I've heard the ride experience is somewhat underwhelming. In one respect, I like B&M for trying this out, but in another respect, it seems like a coaster's worst nightmare. And that is, is it a family coaster or is it a thrill coaster? The problem is that they're marketing it as a family coaster and it has the stats of one, but the seating arrangement would make you think otherwise. 
from what I've heard, this seems like a coaster that would fall under the category of more fun to watch than it is to ride, in one sense. In some ways, Maximus at Legoland is an even more puzzling coaster. This one only has 1,500 feet of track, has a height of 55 feet, a speed of 33 miles an hour, goes upside down twice, and there's not much g-force. So this one also seems to have an identity crisis. Like Mandrel Mayhem, the layout isn't incredibly exciting, and it looks to have some pretty slow twists and turns, but the inversions and the seating arrangement may make it so kids are hesitant to go on it. I guess the question I would raise is, of all the models B&M could have worked off and modified to make a family coaster, I don't think the wing coaster was the best choice. Again, this is just my opinion, but let's look at the coasters B&M has on the schedule for 2024. Dorney Park announced their first coaster in a long while. It's a dive coaster called Iron Menace. Firstly, I'm thrilled that Dorney Park is getting any sort of investment. Even if I don't know if this was the best choice for the park, I'm still glad that they're getting any sort of new coaster because they desperately need it at this point. Iron Menace from a layout perspective is pretty typical of the B&M dive coaster and there's not really a huge problem with that. So with that, let's transition to Phoenix Rising at Busch Gardens Tampa. This will be a family inverted coaster. These models have been made popular by companies like Vacoma, and B&M has only built two of them located in China. I'm gonna be really interested to see what people think of this addition to Busch Gardens Tampa. Now, let's go to SeaWorld Orlando for Penguin Trek. It's been a little bit since I've discussed this addition and we got the official animation yesterday as to what this coaster is really going to look like, at least we hope, because it looks pretty good from the animation and I hope some of the theming elements make it to the real coaster. From SeaWorld Orlando's perspective, it feels like they're trying to fix an error they made in Icebreaker, a premier rides coaster that is pretty similar in some respects. Penguin Trek has a 42 inch height requirement, which I think is great because SeaWorld Orlando has been looking for that family friendly roller coaster. I think this will be a fun coaster and from SeaWorld Orlando's perspective, it should be a solid addition to get that family coaster that they've been searching. For B&M, it's unique. They've never done anything like this before. This addition is what partly sparked the question that led to this video. Is B&M coming out of their shell? Over the last two years, we've seen B&M attempt types of attractions that we've never seen them attempt before. This, Mandrel Mayhem, Pipeline Surf Coaster, Maximus, they all fall under that category. And it's really interesting. The question to be asked about SeaWorld Orlando is, is there some sort of discount where B&M gave them two prototypes at a discounted price? I think it's a high possibility, but I don't believe there's any proof of that. Still though, the other coasters aren't located at a SeaWorld park, so you can't really make that argument for Mandrel Mayhem and then the other coaster at Legoland. So to answer the question, is B&M coming out of their shell? In more than one respect, I think yes, they are. And I think it's really exciting to see. So that was an eight minute explanation for a one word answer. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you think B&M is coming out of their shell? Or do you think they're doing same old, same old with a few slight modifications? I'd love to hear what you guys think down below. As always, I really appreciate you guys for watching and giving me feedback and input on what you think of these topics as well. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. See you next time.